Lord, you may be seated. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. This morning, I want to speak to you from the subject, alone with God. Say with me, alone, alone with God. With God. Alone, alone with God. Have you ever really looked at, analyzed, been able to peek back on all of your life situation and realize who's been there with you all of the time? Isn't it amazing that sometimes we actually think God leaves us by ourselves? There was a man once who so poetically put together a phraseology of words that said, Lord, I assumed, I thought, you said that you always, that you would always be with me. Lord, you said that I could always count on you. But Lord, it seems as though in the most difficult times in my life, when I look at the footprints in the sand, it seems like I'm all by myself. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But see, whenever you talk to God, you ought to wait for a response. So many times we're so busy praying, we don't even hear what God is saying. Sometimes when you get ready to get started with your rhetoric or, or, or starting your poetic prayers, God wants to say when you get down on your knee, get up his answer. But you're so busy trying to get a word in. Amen. Uh, this man found out when God spoke. God said the times you saw just one set of footprints. If simply because those were the days that I was carrying you myself. You ought to give God some praise right then. Amen. Somebody has forgot all about it. <laughs> Can I get a witness? That God does carry us in our most turmoil times. Amen. Here in this text we find Elijah the Tishbite. This man Elijah is the old man Elijah, not Elijah, Elijah. Amen. Elijah is in a situation. Well, Ahab had just told his wife Jezebel that Elijah has killed many of her prophets. Can I get a witness? And in that dialogue, she made a pronouncement. You've got to be careful when you put your mouth on God's folk. The word of God says, touch not my anointing and do, and do my prophet no harm. Amen. She had the audacity to say, may my life be taken. May I get the same that they got if by sometime today, I don't also take the life of this man named Elijah. Can I get a witness? Amen. Now watch this. First of all, the problem I have with that is Ahab is the king and she's the queen. Amen. Come on now, y'all know where I'm going with this. It's a, a bad situation when the king is running nothing. Can I get a witness? You see, when God sets you in headship, you got to operate in the capacity that God has called you. I see King Ahab checking with his wife. Don't get me wrong, I check with my wife about a lot of things, but God called me to. Amen. Oh, come on now. Can I get a witness? Amen. And see, he checked with her and told her because he needed her advice how he should deal with that rather than checking with God himself. Can I get a witness? Amen. There are some things you got to understand in life that you ought to check with God about. Don't get me wrong, now you ought to check with God about everything. But God gives you some liberty to operate in the authority He has given you. Yes. And when word went out, and Elijah heard it, Elijah became very fearful inside because he thought that now all that Israel had did. Ain't none of them seemingly in trouble. Servitude, yes, but none of them are in threat of their life being taken. Oh, I'm so upset. You ever got upset with God because you look across the street and it seemed like somebody ought to be getting the worst? Yeah. And you ought to be getting the less of the worst? Yeah. 
Oh, come on now. I know, no, I, I know somebody in here don't look across the street. Yeah. You don't look across the street at sinners and say, you know, I go to church every day. I pay my tithe, but it seems like they're driving the best car, take the wow. best vacation, and look like all their kids got school clothes on time. Oh, somebody ought to talk to me today. Can I get a witness? I know you come to church every Sunday. I sing in the choir. I'm a part of a board in the church, but but yet yeah, still, folk, you don't know go to church. Seems like they're getting the best jobs. Seems like they're taking the best vacation. But let me tell you something. You ought to look at that situation and close the blinds and say, God ain't through with me yet. Can I get a Elijah went and hid himself in a cave. In a cave. I want to ask you a question. Where you hiding? Where you hiding? You're somewhere right now. It might even be in the closet of your mind. And you're hiding. You're hiding because you're mad with life. You're mad with your physical situation. You're mad with your financial situation. You're mad with your relationship situation. And you're mad with God. And in your madness, you have hid yourself away. Sometimes we hide ourselves away in our mind. We walk by folk and don't speak to nobody. Because we don't want to be bothered. Am I right about it? Sometimes you hide yourself away in your house. You drive out of your house, the garage door comes up, you come back in. You don't even want to see people. Sometimes you hide yourself away in your work. Sometimes you hide yourself away in just having a pity party about you. Oh, yes. What cave have you hid yourself in? But God has a way of finding you. Because you never lost to God. God knows just where you are. And he always asks you the question, what doeth thou here? Can I get with us? You see, we might go a little bit farther back. This is the same Elijah who went to King Ahab and Jezebel. And he went in the boldness of God. You see, when God gives you a sign, he gives you boldness of spirit to be able to go and operate for God. Why? Because you know that God is at my right side. God is at my left side. He's behind me and before me. I can go out because the Lord go with me. Yeah. How do I know? Because he said, Lord, I'll always be with you. Yeah, awesome. Elijah went before Ahab and said, I want you to know something. It's not going to rain anymore. Until I say something and left. Can I get a witness? It's something about when you show, you show, you show. You know you show. And you know who told you to be show. And you show about what you're talking about. And you know God with you. Can I get a witness? I can only imagine he, when he got through saying what he said, he got common. You know you know how we do when we don't say some bubble words. Kind of like me and you when you don't say what you wanted to say to somebody. Then you got it all off your chest and you felt good about it. Until... Can I get witness? He felt good about it. Why? Because he knew he spoke with power and authority. Can I get a witness? You see, you don't have to tell nobody with, with, that you with God. All you got to do is just open your mouth and start speaking. You ain't got to tell nobody you praise God. All you got to do is open your mouth and start praising. And folk would know if you are novice or you don't spend time with God. Am I right about it? Yes, yes, yes. So, so this same... Elijah left and went to the broken chair. God told him, go there and I will provide for you. Right. Sometimes serving God will get you in trouble. Yes. Yes. It'll make you tell your neighbor the trouble you need to grow up spiritually. It'll make you tell your children you ain't all that and you need to be careful. The devil has you been. Come on. Oh, come on now. Yes. It'll make you tell your boss, God was taking care of me before I got a job at your place. You don't hear what I'm saying. Am I right about it? It'll, it'll get you in trouble if you really locked in with God. So you got to be careful when you're talking about, Lord, fill my cup. Fill it up. Oh, I come before you like an empty pitcher before a full fountain. Fill me up. Because I won't no more. You got to be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. And, and, and it comes. Sunday. Yes. And leave them out of your 
no money, you ain't got no power. Put that thing in the verse, y'all hear what I said. I said, don't leave out of here on Sunday. You all pumped up with power, but then on Monday, you like a weak link, a weak diss rat. You ain't got no power to clean up, to wipe up, to dry up, nothing. This ain't feel good Sunday. This is powerful Sunday, a filling station where you get filled with the power of God and you leave and take care of business Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. God said, now you go to the Brooklyn chair, and then I'm going to take care of you, Elijah. Yes. I'm going to send a raven in the morning with some flesh. And I'm going to send him in the afternoon with some flesh. I got the brook of cherry that you drink from the brook. I'll provide something for you to drink and something for you to eat. That's right, that's right, that's right. I said in the morning, and the afternoon. Come on now. Right. Midday, somebody will be praying. Come on oh, come on now. You see, many of us don't realize you eating too much of the wrong junk food. All right, all right. Can I get a witness? Amen. You see, many of us, we spend endless time eating and no time thanking. Come on, come on now. Oh, come on now. Come on now. And no time thanking. You got to learn how to thank God uh -huh. sometimes for the best. He's giving you. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Come on now. See, see you want to be Mr. and Mrs. Big Stuff. You want to thank God yeah, for the big car. You want to thank God for the big house. You want to thank God for the clothes, God, the foot of clothes. You want to thank God for high education. You want to thank God when you ain't got but a GED. You want to thank God when you ain't got but a PT. You want to thank God when you ain't got but a Shakti. You want to thank God for When you got nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, when you get a whole lot of stuff, yeah, it come easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tip and fake out the back. <laughs> Tell the number one, thank you. <laughs> Tell the number two, thank you. <laughs> Tell the number three, four, five, thank you. <laughs> Can I get a witness? <laughs> well, watch this. But the brook dried up. <laughs> and the raven would come. <laughs> You've been mad at God because you have got shit <laughs> And working with bad men. You got situated. We're working beneath your standards of living. You got situated. We're making a dollar out of 15 cents. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. Who am I talking to today? Who am I talking to today? They live in big dollar stores. <laughs> Just, oh, come on now. <laughs> and when the brook dried up, God still provides. See, my problem when I'm listening, when one door closed, another one will open. We got a neighbor to neighbor. God's got another door. He got another door. I said he got another door. Give God some praise. I said God got another door. He got another door. One door closed. He got another door. 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 He said that's a widow woman. About to die. Because you know you said it won't be no rain so there's a drought. In her city. Everything drying up. So she, 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 she about to die. She want to pack it all in. Don't know what happened to her husband, but she's a widow. She's by herself, just her and her child. All her provisions is gone. So she figured she'd make her last. And can I get a little meal? A little whole cake and, and just go on and die. But Elijah got there, amen. God always has somebody to come just in the nick of Oh, y'all believe it. Let me come over here. I said, God always has somebody that will come just in the nick of. Can I get I said, just in the nick of. Can I get a witness? And, and see what happened. When he got to her, he said, Madam, could you bring me some water, please? Now, he don't mess up her schedule already, man. 